doll collectors, hobbyists, fab some besties. I'm Toya, an adult doll collector. Welcome to my miniverse. Well, right now it's just a blank screen, but don't worry, we'll fix that later. Or we could just do it right now and make a backdrop. I'm using foam board. However, cardboard is also a good option. I have glitter paper for a little sparkle. Thanks to Barbie Model Mayhem on Instagram, we are using round cake toppers for balloons. And let's throw in a few flowers. My foam board is 20 inches wide, so I measure over 13 inches and make a mark, cut on the line drawn to have a 13 by 20 inch rectangle. I cut two and then I drew a plan. This is going to be our little folding doll room. I'm going to use the two 20 inch boards for the back, then cut a 14 by 12 inch board for the floor. So I will need another piece of foam board to cut for the floor. This is 12 by 14 inches. Let's score a line two inches from the edge, being careful not to cut all the way through so it can bend. I flip it over so the cut side is facing down, then cover it with scrapbook paper, making sure it can still bend. Then take the rectangles for the walls and we're going to follow our measurements. This is one of the rectangles and this is the other rectangle. On the 20 inch side, I measure over 11 inches and score a line so it can bend. Then I flip it over and measure over six inches from the edge and score a line and bend it. So when we stand it up, our wall goes over, forward, and over. Then we repeat for the other side, but there are a few differences in the measurements. This is still six inches, this is two and a half, and this is 11 and a half. And I just realized that this is not gonna do what I want it to do. We have to cut this wall completely because I want it to be able to bend both ways. So I cut all the way through, cutting the wall into two pieces, cut computer paper into strips, place the board side by side with a little space in between them, glue the paper over the gap to connect them. And now our wall has more range. On the other side, I'm going to add a printable step and repeat. Some dolly friends and I are having a little prom on Instagram. So now we have an easy backdrop for taking photos. I also made a printer friendly one to glue onto the other wall. Because you know, I love options. Now that the outside of our box is decorated, let's decorate the inside. I take leftover foam board and cut it into strips. Then glue them onto the side walls for baseboards. I added another one about five inches up. I glue together a few thin strips to make rectangles to glue onto the walls. Repeat for the other wall. Then I glue the two six inch sides together. Then glue in the floor. Glue the sides up to the bend so the floor can still fold up and now we can fold in the side walls, overlapping them to make our box even smaller. And this is all the space it will need on the shelf. Let's open it up and decorate the inside. As long as whatever we put on the wall doesn't go out farther than two inches, our box will still fold up. I'm gluing some gold scrapbook paper onto the back wall. I cut more foam board. I covered it with a shiny scrapbook paper. I cut two more shapes and this time I made them blue and I glue them onto the sides. Then I take those cake toppers and glue them onto the sides. I'm adding blue, pink, white, and gold to look like balloons. Then let's take a few flowers and glue them into the gaps to make a backdrop. Thanks Barbie Model Mayhem for the inspiration. 
Since the walls open up, we can make it look like a large room. Or we can pull the walls in and narrow the scene. And I didn't glue down this piece, so we can switch it out for different events. But right now with this backdrop, let's try on some clothes. Here is my latest Koragoo dress from Amazon. Kate has volunteered to model for us today. This is a mermaid dress with blue, black, and gold stitching at the top with blue and black tulle at the bottom. It's very pretty and very glamorous. Here is another Koragoo dress. I've been looking at this one for a while and I finally gave in. This is a black dress with embroidered flowers. It has the same cut as the last dress with black mesh at the bottom. I bought these on Amazon. This one was $13.99 and this was $18. They don't look like prom dresses, but we're gonna take a look at them anyway. One came with a tote bag. It looks like a little keychain, and there's a squeaker inside. So yeah, that's there. It feels like a plastic fabric might make a great beach bag. Here's the included dress. It also has a large hat, which does not look like it'll fit a Barbie. We might be able to use it with a rainbow high doll, but it might need like a pen or an elastic strap. A pair of white undies were included. Here they are on a classic Barbie, and here they are on a curvy. I think it's a better fit. The dress is a little large for a classic Barbie. It's a better fit on a curvy, but a little loose at the shoulders. It's a cute summer look. It's asymmetrical, it's higher in the front, lower in the back. It's just a little large, but the bag fits. The second one priced at $18.99 has two different looks. Here's the hat for the first one. There's a black top with a ruffle around the neckline. It's a good fit on a classic. The undies are still a little large. Then there's a wrap skirt. It can be tied to fit a classic Barbie. And I think it's kind of cute. On mine, the print was not cut straight in the back, but I like this little ruffle detail on the side and this could be a great look for summer. Here it is on a curvy. The skirt does sit a little higher. The top fits just fine. I could see my dolls wearing this walking the boardwalk. Since the hat fits a rainbow high doll, I thought we could try on the outfit. The top is a little loose, but I think we can get away with it. The bottoms are definitely a little loose. And with the skirt, there's some bulk at the waist. But I like that it is a complete set and you can probably get it to fit a little better with some tailoring. Here's the second look included in that set. Once again, we get an oversized hat, a pair of undies, a lace top that's a little loose on a classic body, paired with a faux wrap skirt. There's a stitched bow in front and it Velcros in the back. The skirt is a little large, but it works on a curvy. The top is an eyelet lace. There are some holes, so yeah. But the skirt is a pretty good fit. And I'll be adding this to our curvy wardrobe. I do like how these outfits come with undies. So I went in search of undies and I found these on Amazon for $6.99 for 30 pairs. We did get 30 and there are several repeat colors. I have seven of these pink stripy ones, seven pink and yellow, six purple, six green, two neon green, one blue, and one purple floral print. They are an okay fit on a classic Barbie. There's a little bulk at the waist. Here it is from the back. Some of them fit a little differently than others. There are some inconsistencies in the stitching. Here's a pair on a curvy. This pair dips a little in the back and they are a little bit of a challenge to get on. Some of them work okay for a rainbow high doll, but I don't know, there are a lot of inconsistencies, but these might work for you if you don't want all your dolls laying around in their birthday suits. I got a few things on Etsy. I'm checking out a new shop. It's called Mary Ann's Doll Boutique. I picked up a few dresses. This one was $14. Here we have an orange plaid dress. 
It has puff sleeves with trim at the neckline and around the sleeves, a bow detail, thin Velcro in the back. This could be a cute look for a picnic. Here it is in yellow. I'm thinking garden party. There's a butterfly detail at the waist. Here it is in pink. It's a little snug at the chest. I think these might have been made for model muse bodies, but I can still get it to close in the back. This might be a fun look for a tea party. Did someone say tea party? I couldn't resist. She had this Alice in Wonderland outfit. Priced at $24.50, we have a headband with a black bow, a paper accessory on a ribbon, a white apron with lace or a pinafold. It velcros in the back and has a faux bow. It is removable and there is a blue dress with lace at the bottom underneath. And of course, I had to stop by some of my favorite shops like Elite Doll World and I picked up a few Barbie dresses. It's pink. There is no opening in the back. It has a nice little stretch to it, so it was pretty easy to get on. This is a high-waisted dress that stops just above the knee. It can fit a curvy, and it's a pretty nice fit too. Here the dress is on a rainbow high doll. It comes down past the knee. There's a little space around the neck, but it's still a cute look. And there's a skirt allowing us to mix and match different tops. See, we can switch out the skirt for joggers or leggings. And of course, you can never go wrong with leggings and a hoodie. But I think we're supposed to be looking for a dress for prom. I do have a few new dresses from M Creations Paris Etsy shop. I've been wanting this dress for a minute. It's a floral print with a long sleeve and a full skirt. It has all these colorful flowers. I kind of love it. And when I bought this one, I was thinking tropical vacation. Ruffles at the shoulder. The front opens up to reveal a short skirt. It's a perfect poolside look. But for prom, I'm thinking pastels. Ooh, what about tulle? But first, I'm changing the step and repeats and going from this to this and turn this to this. And of course, we can leave out the neon light sign and just use the names by printing that page twice. Now for the dress. I'm using tulle, a cotton fabric, elastic, I got one that is light pink, and thread. I'm thinking that we can make this like we used to with our simple cotton dresses, but I haven't tested it, so we are experimenting. And this is the plan. E stands for elastic. We're gonna cut a rectangle of a cotton fabric, put gathered tool on top, and then sew on some elastic. I drew the plan bigger on a piece of paper, place it onto the fabric, and trace around it. I use Taylor's chalk to draw my lines. Cut on the outside edge for the base of our dress. I cut eight layers of tool that are longer than the cotton fabric. At the very top, I sew a straight stitch using a sewing machine. However, you can also do this by hand. I kept the stitch loose so I can pull together. But before we do that, let's sew the rest of the lines according to our guide. Then we gather by pulling the threads gently and pushing the fabric until it is about the same width as the cotton fabric. And I like to leave it a little flat on the ends to make it easier to sew. Take the cotton fabric, fold over and hem the top and bottom. I place the tool on top and I try to line up the lines. I use pens to hold everything in place. Then I stretch and sew elastic over the lines with a zigzag stitch. Hmm, this is a little tight. I hope we can get it on the doll. Probably should have did seven inches rather than six and a quarter just to give myself a little extra space. Yeah, but let's keep going. We're gonna fold this in half. So the good side is on the inside. I use pins to hold it in place. And now I am going to sew a straight line all the way down as close to the edge as I can. And I'm hoping the doll can fit in this. 
Let's turn it inside out, if that is even possible. Let's trim it to make a dress for prom. Not too bad. We do have a nice amount of bulk. If I was to make this again, I would only use three layers of tulle and then just make a can-can to go underneath. But since we used elastic, we can just slip the doll into the dress and it's finished all the way around. I think this will be a cute look for prom or any occasion. Thank you for joining us while we made a backdrop and checked out a few dresses. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at myfroggystuff, the frog vlog, and Bella of myfroggystuff. And we will see you next time.